Hi, it's little Lisa. Thought I'd show you because today's the day we're making applesauce and we're going to can it. So I thought I'd do a little video and teach you how to do it. So um, the apples that I'm cutting up right now are just some gala from the grocery store that were in my fridge and they need to be used up. So I'm going to use them. There was just a few. Um, but I bought a bushel of apples, number two apples, which are like the ones with maybe some little, uh, you know, issues um, at our favorite organic apple orchard. So um, we're gonna use mostly those, um, but I thought I'd start with these. So all I start with is a big, huge pot. We have a big, huge stock pot we use. And I put a little bit of water in there, maybe, I don't know, a cup of water-ish, just enough in the bottom to kind of cover the bottom so that they don't scorch um, from the sugar content. And then I just quarter the apples. We washed them already. Um, I don't, peel them or anything like that because I'm going to put them through a food mill. So I, the seeds, the cores, the whole nine yards go in there. You just quarter them into chunks and put them in here. So I started cutting some. I'm going to put them all in the pot and then keep going. When I get the pot filled up, I'll come back and show you what we do next. Okay, so I thought I'd show you before I finish. I got all the galas cut up and in there. Um, there was one that had a bad spot. I just cut it out. These are Macintosh. So I got a half bushel of Macintosh. Um, they only had two kinds available to get in the number two apples. Um, so they gave me a half bushel of Macintosh and a half bushel of an apple called Initial. Um, they don't, then they had Honeycrisp, but of course they don't do those as the number twos for like a big box um, for applesauce because they're more expensive. Um, so these are the apples. And if you see some of them have little blemishes or they're a little bit misshapen, that's fine. If it looks like something bad, I'll cut it out before I put them in the pot. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take a bunch of these, wash them up. Um, and these are great because they're a little bit cheaper. They're buying like the number one apples. So it ends up being a little more economical. I think it was um, $56 for the bushel of apples um, of these number twos at, our, at the orchard we go to, which is like about an hour away. Um, so I go there every once in a while and stock up. I also got cider um, when I was there. So we like to go. Um, it's a neat place. They have animals the kids can go see and stuff like that. So um, anyway, I'm just going to wash these up and get them chopped up and then we'll do some of the um, initial apples because I like to mix my apples. I feel it gives it a better taste to your applesauce to have like a variety of different types of apples. So I usually whatever I can get is what I use, but I usually tell them I want the mixed bushel um, so that I have at least two different kinds to put in there. It just gives it a better depth of flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna go wash these up and cut them up. I'll be back. Okay, so as we were cutting these apples, sometimes they have bugs and stuff in them. So I got one that, as you can see, it's got like a bug in the middle of the core. And so I don't throw the whole apple away. I cut it into quarters and then I cut away that bad part with the core into, I have a bowl, I'll just stick it in my compost. And then you've got a good portion of apple that I put in there. Um, and I'll wash off my knife before I do the next apple. But um, if you need to, you can, this one I need to rinse off before I put it in there. But, you know, you can still save a good part of the apple. So we cut the bad spots out. Um, you know, that's part of getting organic apples and it's part of getting number twos for sauce. But in the long run, I mean, we've already almost filled up this pot and this is all the waste I've had. So really, it's not a big deal to me and it's a cheaper way to do it. So um, I did a bunch of the Macintosh apples in here, which the Macintosh apples are um, like a soft kind of apple that's good for like baking and things like that. So they're good for applesauce. Um, they're like a cook, what I would call a cooking apple. Um, the other variety that they had in stock is called Initial, which I wasn't super familiar with, but I looked it up and it is a larger, as you can see, size apple with a yellowish undertone with red blush. And it's a crisp, sweet, good for eating. Um, but it's a crossbreed between a gala and a red free apple. It was crossed in France um, and it's a newer variety um, hybrid. Uh, and it's like an early apple and it, um, so it ripens before like say gala and things like that. But anyway, gala is one of my favorite apples. So I thought these would be good um, in the applesauce. They have a high sugar content. So anyway, we're gonna cut these up and put some of those in. And then the only other thing we add is cinnamon sticks. So we broke a cinnamon stick in half. I have like whole cinnamon sticks. So we broke one in half, put half of it towards the bottom and I'll put this one on the top and then we will cook the apples. And we're actually doing two pots at once because we're just gonna try and use up most of these apples. Okay, so I will finish cutting these up and be back. 
Okay, so we got all of the apples cut up. We had a few Macintosh left and like five of the initial left over that we'll probably just use for something else. Um, and we've got two pots full. Now, if you notice, we overfilled the pots. You don't have to. We just wanted to use up as many apples as possible and they'll cook down. So the little end up cook going down once they start cooking. But we put it on medium heat and we're just gonna let it come to a simmer. Once it's simmering, we'll turn it down to low and let it simmer with the lid on till they're all soft and mushy. You'll know they'll cook way down and be totally soft mush. Um, so we've got both pots going and when we're done, we'll come back and I'll let you know about how long it took and then I'll show you how we mill it. Okay, so the first pot is done. We had to put a little bit more water in this pot, the taller, uh, in the taller pot. This one was fine. Um, Anyways, I wanted to show you, I'm gonna try and turn this, but it's hot and heavy, hold on. So I wanted to show you how much it cooked down and how soft it is. I don't know if you can see it in there. Can you see in there? So yeah, it cooked down quite a bit and it's very soft and mushy, you can tell. So now we're going to, Just scoop it out here. This is hot, but I'm gonna turn it a little bit. Okay. So we've got a food mill. So it's just a little apparatus that you can put things through and it puts the, um, you know, the parts that'll go through, it squishes it through and like seeds and skin and stuff won't go through. So it's got little holes in the bottom and it usually comes with interchangeable blades. So you have like different sizes. So we use this one, I don't know what it's called. And then this one happens to have feet that's really nice, that rubber feet that rest on your bowl so that it doesn't slip around. And it just turns and it turns both directions and it comes apart for cleaning. So um, anyway, I'm just gonna scoop this apple mush in there I'm gonna put a little bit like that. And then you just kind of mush it around. Here, I'm gonna scooch the bowl over. Okay, there we go. And you just keep blending it through. It'll, you can see it coming out the bottom a little bit. I don't know if you can tell, but it comes out, drips into the bowl. And I'll have a little bit of a red hue because we left the peels on. If you don't want yours to look a little blush pink, you'll have to peel your apples. Um, Anyway, you just keep going, and when it kind of seems like it's not coming through as much, you just turn the opposite direction, you know, kind of push it through. And sometimes as it gets, you have to kind of move it into the, I'll kind of move it over a little bit so it's where it hits the blade. There we go. And this is time consuming. It's not like super, you know, like all done. It does take some time. You have to go each little batch, but it's the easiest way with the least amount of waste because peeling, I feel like peeling your apples, you'll get a lot of waste. And another thing I want to mention is you saw the size of the holes in this mill. I found that over time, um, I'm going to add a little bit more before I clean it out because there's not much stuff in there. Um, so when we were peeling the apples, as many as we could, and we may have missed a few, we took out the cores, uh, the stems, I mean, not the cores, the stems. So we de-stemmed the apples as we were cutting them up only because the little stems tend to get stuck in the mill. And so then it makes it a little bit harder to you know, get stuff through, you gotta clean it out more. So we do de-stem it as much as possible before we cook them. So, and, um, and you want enough water, you know how we started with the water, you want enough water that it won't scorch. Um, so it really depends on your apples. So like my apples, I just picked up yesterday at the orchard, so they're pretty fresh, but the ones from the fridge were a little bit um, older. So if you have like older apples or a variety of apples that doesn't have a lot of water content in it, you may need to add a little bit more water just to keep them from burning. We noticed that that other um, pot was, um, running out of water, so we added a little bit more so it wouldn't burn. And when I'm done with this little bit, I will show you how much is in the bowl. I don't think you can see with this on there. But you just keep turning it, good arm exercise. And you'll see that the like peels and stuff that are there get pretty dry, you kind of know you're at the end of 
being able to mash it around more. And then I just dump it out. Okay, so what I'm left with, here I'll kind of push it down so you can get a good view of it. Push it to the open section. So I don't know how well you can see in there, but you can see there's like the dry peels and everything, but there's a lot of sauce still on the bottom. So I'm gonna just scrape this off here. There's a seed on there. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, hold on. I don't want the seed in there. All right, I'm gonna scrape the bottom of this to get all this lovely applesauce off that just is clinging to the bottom so it doesn't drip on my counter. And then I'm just gonna dump out, I'll scrape it out as much as I can. It's not critical you get it all because you'll just keep milling the next batch and it'll eventually come out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Get the majority of it. So I put that in there, I'll put it in my compost and then here is my luscious applesauce so far. So I'm just gonna mill up the rest of this. My husband's probably gonna help your arm gets sore after a while so <laughs> um and then the other pot should be ready about then so we're just going to mill the rest just like i showed you and then we'll come back and show you how we can it okay i just wanted to let you know the lower you get into the pan the juicier it'll be because the water and the liquid is down there you want all that liquid and water so you just put that right through the mill it'll uh go right through the holes as you mill but you want all that juice that's yummy apple juice that helps make your applesauce so delicious with all the flavor. So, um, so you just keep milling. And if you come across your cinnamon sticks, you don't really want to put those to the mill. They'll clog it because they're still pretty hard. So you want to pick those out and get rid of them. So we just keep milling. And um, my son already had a bowl because it's hot applesauce, fresh made applesauce is absolutely delicious. Of course, it's delicious cold too but we always have to have a bowl of it hot because it's just so yummy. So as soon as this bowl is full, we'll start um, jarring it up because we my canner, I'm using my, um, I use my pressure canner as a water bath so I don't put the pressure lid on or put it, bring it to pressure. I fill it with water. It's just a nice big pot to use for water bathing. So we, we're water bathing this. Um, we just follow the guidelines in the ball blue book and um, so I want my applesauce to still be hot. I want to ladle it into my hot jars and then put it in. And my, it only holds seven quarts at a time. So I'm probably going to, once this uh, bowl is filled, start filling the jars so that they'll still be warm. And then we'll keep milling into another bowl while we fill jars so that we can get um, at least one batch going. Okay, so we have a bowl full of applesauce and I have a couple bowls that my kids ate. And I'm going to fill the jar. So I have a hot jar, just came out of boiling water. I have this kind of canning funnel that just tells me the headspace, so I don't have to measure as much. I usually still check it. Um, and I'm just gonna ladle this in here. It's still hot, steaming. And I tend to use, you can use any jar. I like to do quarts because we go through it. There's six of us and um, I cook with it too. And um, I tend to use narrow mouth because it can pour out of them. So I save my wide mouth for things that I need to, you know, fit something in. Okay. Okay, that looks about good. Oh, I might've overfilled it. it. It was, hold on. All right. When I do that, I have this nice little, I can take some out. It was gooped on one side, so the side I was reading was lower than the other side. All right, so there we go. That should be good. I'm gonna check it. This little tool tells you. I can do a tiny bit more. Okay, that should be good. Okay, now, when you're canning, I don't know, you probably can't see over this um, bowl. Hopefully you can see. So I've got the hot jar filled with pot. I take just this wa water because this just doesn't have any kind of um, oil or anything fat in it. Um, and I wipe the rim before I put my lid on. And then we just 
um, dip the rim in some boiling water to kind of soften the seal, put it on, and then screw on the cap till it's like tight, but you don't want to torque it, just till it like stops, like what they call finger tight. And then he's going to put it over there, and then when they're all done, we'll put them in the boiling water. So you just keep, oh, so some of these are wide mouth. I'm getting low on jars. We've canned so much um, tomato sauce and pickles and stuff. Okay, so put this back on. And I will say, you can see I get it on the counter. It's kind of inevitable. But I do recommend you wipe it up when it's still wet and not let it dry on your counter because it kind of turns into like industrial strength glue. All right, now I did spill on the side here, and I just have this mitt because holding onto the jar while I wipe the rim is difficult, and the jar is super hot. So I always wipe it. And if you have to use another um, cloth or something to wipe it with, do that. But make sure you wipe your rim well because otherwise that's why you have failures, one of the main reasons. And these are old curl lids that were at my mom's when she passed away, and um, my dad gave them to me. And uh, they work great, but they're like from probably the 70s or 80s. <laughs> but we keep using them up. And you, can buy and you can buy a set of canning tools that has like the little tongs and the magnet for the lids and the tool and a fun, uh, funnel. Um, we have a couple different ones. But they usually, they usually come in a set. I just happened to get this type of funnel on uh, Amazon a ago. The reason we use tongs is because the jars are very hot. The rings, we don't heat, just the lids and the jars. And the newer, the newer rings say you don't need to heat them, but I still dip them in water. I feel it just softens the um, rubber gasket enough to help them seal better. Um, I don't have as many failures, but I definitely don't simmer them in water like you used to have to do in the old days. These older ones probably could use it, but I had no problem just dipping them in the water for a bit. And we usually can them, and if one doesn't seal, then um, we just put it in the fridge and eat that one first. But you usually don't have too many failures. And the reason why you don't want to um, tighten your lid too much, if you tighten it too much, when when it's boiling in the canner, the air is going to escape. So you'll end up with the vacuum that seals. Um, and then the rubber gasket will seal it when you take it out and it starts to cool. It'll, you know, the vacuum will happen and it'll seal it down. But if you tighten it too much and it can't let that pressure out from that boiling, the air, the air escaping, it will buckle your lid and then it won't seal. So you kind of want to not put it too tight, but you also don't want to put it too loose. And actually, when you take it out of the canner, you can always test it, obviously, with an oven mitt on, and make sure it's screwed down tight when it comes out, and then it'll help it seal better. All right, I don't think I have enough to fill this jar. I have to use some from the other bowl. It needs to be at a rapid boil, so we'll make sure it once they get in, because it cools down the temperature of the water when you put all those jars back in. And the reason you want hot jars, hot water, hot, is because if you put a cold jar with hot stuff in it or cold stuff in a cold jar and put it in hot water, it's going to explode. Like, it's going to break the jar. So you want everything to be hot or everything to be cold. But if you start with cold, then you've got to bring it up to a boil. It takes a long time. So we just do hot, hot, hot. It's kind of what's recommended. But um, so we put it in there. We bring the water you know, up back up to a boil. As soon as it starts boiling, we set the timer. For applesauce, because it's apples are high acid, um, that's why we can do water bath, we do 20 minutes. So then once it comes up to a boil, you set the timer for 20 minutes. When the 20 minutes stops, turn the heat off take them out, set them on a towel, cover it with another towel so that they don't cool down too quickly and break and just let it sit. You'll hear a pop. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this one.
so we're probably going to get like 15 or 16 quarts. Which won't last us very long. It'll last us a few months. The kids have been bumming because we've been out of applesauce, and now that we've made our homemade for years and years, they won't eat the store-bought. They don't like it. I don't really blame them, but the few times I've needed applesauce for something, I buy store-bought for a recipe, and then we have the rest of the jar. They won't eat it, so I end up just cooking with it. seems to oh oops. <laughs> I'm not thinking very clearly here all right all right so the tatler lid is a reusable plastic lid with a gasket works slightly differently as far as you Put this one down real tight and then back it up a notch. Okay. Then after processing, when you take it out, you gotta make sure you tighten it. Crank it down really tight and let it completely cool to seal. Okay, so we'll be back when we take them out. Okay, so I kind of wanted to give you a little tutorial on the canning part too. So if you can see now, I moved the camera so you can see in the pot. It's boiling. We've set the timer. It's got another like 16 and a half minutes. And if you notice, the water is over the top of the jars. You want to make sure it's over the top of the jars. So when you have the empty jars in there to warm up or you've already got your warm jars, um, when you put the full jars in, it'll displace some water. Um, so if you have too much, you can take some out. But if you don't have enough water when you put them in, it's not covering them by at least like a half inch or so then you're going to want to have some boiling water ready to pour in there, like from a tea kettle or something, so that you can add hot water and not have to wait for it to come all the way back up to a boil with the cold with cold water. So anyway, that's what you want to do. You want to make sure they're covered with water and it's boiling. See, you can see the bubbles. It's like a good rolling boil, boil in there. So we're just going to let it go for the next 15 or so minutes, and then um, we'll take them out and set them on the towel, cover them with another towel. And that's all we do. We will make sure, like the one that we use, the plastic tatler lid, we'll make sure we screw that down when we take it out of the water. Okay, so it finished, and my husband's going to take them out and set them down. You want to be very careful because it's super hot. Okay, so then he'll take the mitts and tighten down the tatler lid one. And he'll make sure all the other ones are tight too. Then he's gonna cover them with a towel. And we'll just leave them rest. We'll hear them start popping. We might need two towels because it's a pretty big number. And then we just leave them. And then by tomorrow, they'll cool. We'll take the rings off, mark the date, and, and put them downstairs in our um, pantry. All right, bye.